Hello, Mr. Gazda here, 360 Ocean Current page of the reference table. Check it out. The diagram on the back of this page is from page 4 of the reference table. It shows the ocean currents on Earth. Here we go. So, what I recommend you do is tear it off like that. So you have, this is the ocean currents right here. Key thing here is um, pretty much this. This is the key. Warm currents, cool currents. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward, I think. So, let's do some color in here. Uh, find the arrow showing the ocean currents off the east coast of North America. Color over all these arrows showing warm currents with red. Where's a red? I need a red. I don't have any red pencils here. Are you kidding me? This is kind of red, right? Yeah, that's that's red right there. So, uh, what am I doing? Warm currents, red, east coast, North America. Here we go. So this is the east coast of North America. The warm currents are here. So I'm going to say it's the Gulf Stream here, and then probably this current here, and this current here. That's, that's the best. In the Pacific Ocean color over all the arrows showing cool ocean currents with blue. I get light blue. What am I doing? Pacific cool currents with blue. The cool currents are um, these right here. They have no color. Pacific, what am I doing? Pacific Ocean, all of the cool ocean currents with blue. Okay, so in the Pacific Ocean, um, all the cool currents with blue. Here, so this is now the South Pacific. Here, here, here. Whether you call this the South Pacific, I don't know. Uh, but definitely this is kind of what I'm most interested in is these currents here. And then maybe you want to do this too. And maybe this too. Okay. Cool currents, blue, that's number one and two are done. In the Pacific Ocean color over all the arrows showing warm ocean currents with orange. Warm currents are these um, these ones here, the, the black ones. So, a lot here, color over, we're just, okay, it get a little complicated around the equator for sure. Here, 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 here. Here. There we go. That's three. Based on two and three, check the box for each correct statement. Warm water generally moves from the poles toward the equator. Warm water. So warm water is uh, this. Warm water are the dark ones. So based on two and three, the Pacific Ocean stuff. The Pacific Ocean. Warm water says warm water generally moves from the poles towards the equator. From the poles towards the equator. Uh, that's not the case. The pole, from the poles to the equator is generally these cool currents. And in this case, pole to the equator, cool currents. So definitely not the first one. Second one says warm water generally moves from the equator towards the poles. Uh, and that's we see, from the equator towards the poles. We saw the black arrows. We see that happening here and we see it happening here. And that's true. That is, uh, so definitely check this box here. And one thing I want people to see is that, that that is sort of how heat is distributed on, on Earth. The, the, the equator gets a lot of sunlight, okay, very or a lot of direct sunlight, so it really warms the water here. And then that warm water travels uh, t closer to the poles, further from the equator, and it travels down here. And that's sort of the distribution of heat throughout Earth. That is how you get um, heat kind of from the equator to parts closer to the poles, both south and north. Uh, by the movement of ocean currents, and that really what makes Earth livable further away from the equator is the movement of ocean currents. If the ocean currents stopped tomorrow, it would be much colder up here, kind of where we live. It would be much colder further uh, from or closer to the um, South Pole as well. That is a key fact. So um, that one definitely gets checked. Cool water generally moves from the poles towards the equator. From the poles towards the equator, cool here is blue, and that is true. That is also true. Cool water moves. So basically, the it distributes heat, brings water up here, um, uh, brings hot warm water up here, brings some heat up here, loses it to the air. That water gets cooled as it loses heat. Cool water goes back, gets reheated, creates this this circle of pattern distribution of heat, like. Um, and then same thing here, cools down, then the cool water gets back, gets reheated, and this sort of circular motion is the distribution of heat throughout larger sections of the um, globe, which is cool. Five, know it. The know it stuff is important, so make sure that you know those things. Ocean currents are an important method of distrib distributing heat around Earth. In general, ocean water is heated near the equator, and ocean currents transport this warm water toward the poles. 
the water loses heat as it moves towards the poles. Then the cooled water, cooled water near the poles moves towards the equator to be reheated again. Okay, that is just what I kind of explained. Know that. Make sure you understand that clearly. Okay? Important. Circle the arrow showing the following ocean currents with the color listed. Okay, California current. I'm going to circle it in red. Where's the California current? Right here in red. Uh, so I did that one. North Atlantic current in purple. Where's the North Atlantic current? North Atlantic current. I'm going to circle these right there with purple. Done. West Greenland current red. Where's the West Greenland? I'm so circling the current, not just the name, but the actual uh, arrow showing the current. With red, that's done. Gulf Stream current with green. Gulf Stream current. Where's the Gulf Stream? With green. So this is that's like this current right here. Goes along the east coast. That's a warms the water off the coast uh, where we live. Um, this current, the Oyashio current. I don't even know how to pronounce that really. Uh, and that's going to be yellow. Okay, that's right here. Circle it with yellow. So a lot of this is just cir look, look, looking around for them. Circle that with yellow. A little hard to see. And then we have the Brazil current with green. Brazil current. Here's the Brazil current here near Brazil, hence the name. Okay. The Peru current with brown. Peru current with brown is right here. Okay. Canary current blue. Canary current with blue. Okay, right. Uh, that blue doesn't work. Canary current right there. With blue, cross that out. And the Benguela current with brown. Well, current with brown. So it, it will involve for you a lot of looking around, but they're all named. So there we go. That's that. So those are some currents there. And it's other ones too. We didn't do them all. East, Green, East Greenland, etc. Uh, know it. Another know it. These are important. The temperature of the ocean currents has a significant effect on the climate of the nearby land masses. Okay, that is a key part to this. Okay. Warm currents warm the nearby land, cool currents cool the nearby land. So if you live near a warm ocean current, your land, your area will be warmer than it would be without that current. Okay? So, that is key. Know this. All the know-it things are important. If there's a quiz on this, it's important to know those things. Make sure you know them. What is the name? of the ocean current that most directly affects New York State. Well, you gotta know New York State is like right here. That's New York State right there. So, most, what do I say most directly affects it? It is this, the Gulf Stream current. Gulf Stream current. Is the current that most directly affects New York State warm water or cool water? Well, look down here. It is a black color. It is a warm water current. It is warm water current. And that is why we can swim off the coast of New York or um, Massachusetts, New Jersey, because this warm water is coming up from the poles. Same latitude over here, okay, as, let's say, long, uh, New York coastline. You go over here to California, that's like... San Francisco area, this cold current, you cannot go swimming there. It is ice cold. You need a wetsuit, uh, but though it's the same latitude because it's cold water coming down, has been lost all its heat in the polar regions. Remember that next time you try to go swimming in San Francisco. Ten, the North Atlantic current affects the climate of Europe. Europe, the main effect of this current is that it, one, cools Europe or warms Europe. So uh, this right here, North Atlantic current, is a warm current, so it's hitting Europe, it's going to warm it. It's going to warm it up much warmer uh, than it would be that if there were no ocean currents there. If the currents just stopped, it's going to be much colder. So that, um, let me see, two, warms Europe. Eleven, for each location listed, right, whether the land nearby is warmed or cooled by the closest ocean current, east coast of Australia. So you got to really think, which is east coast? This is the east coast of, uh, of Australia, and that is a warm current, so it is warmed. And northern Europe, northern Europe over here, it is warmed by this current. We kind of said that before. Warmed. West coast of the U.S. This is the west coast of the U.S., and this is a cool current. The California current, ironically, is 
cool. We think of California being warm. It's a cool current. So it is actually cooled by that current. Now, once you get down to the Los Angeles area, Southern California, San Diego, that water, it's pretty far south. That water has really been warmed by that point. So it is actually, but it's actually cool. The uh, northern parts of California water is icy. West coast of Australia. So here's Australia, west coast. This is a cool current here returning from the pole, so that's going to be cooled. East coast of South America. South America, east coast, warm current. That Brazil current is warm. Warmed west coast of South America. West coast of, now west coast of South America. This is a cool current going back this way. Cool current going this way. So that is going to be cooled. Okay, uh, compare the rotation of ocean currents in the northern hemisphere to the rotation of the currents in the southern hemisphere. How does the rotation of these currents differ? Complete sentences, please. Hint, look at how the water moves within each of these oceans. Okay, so what you want to do, look at the movement here, okay? This is north of the equator. Look how it goes this way, okay? Look how it goes this way in the North Atlantic. And then if you look at the um, south of the equator, here's the equator right here. I put my pen there. Now these kind of go in this rotation if you follow the arrows. This goes in this rotation. And this goes in this rotation. How does the rotation... Okay, so write that in there. I'll let you do that. Complete sentences. Make it good. You should be able to figure that out. Look at those things. On the back. Oh, another know it one. That's important. The difference in the directions of the rotation in the northern and southern hemisphere is caused by the rotation of Earth on its axis. The curving of ocean currents and winds on Earth due to Earth's rotation on its axis is called the blank effect. Okay? If you don't know that, if you don't remember that from the beginning of the year, the, it curves winds. We do it with winds usually during weather, but it also makes the ocean currents be curve, uh, rotate in different directions here and here. And that, my friends, if you don't remember, it is this, the Coriolis effect. I'll write it even larger, Coriolis effect. And that causes these currents to be uh, rotate in different directions, depending on what, uh, whether it's north or south of the equator. It causes winds to curve differently in different locations. Uh, it's also evidence that Earth rotates. No Coriolis effect equals evidence or proof that Earth rotates. All right, what is the longitude of the O in North America? What's the longitude of the O in North America? And what I did right here, I made it right there. So it's 100, question 100, north, south, east, or west. Well, this line goes like this. We compare it to zero. From zero, what direction is it? And if you know that's north, south, east, West, it is west of it, so it's 100 degrees west. 100 degrees west. What is the approximate latitude of the A in Australia? A in Australia, right there. So if I was to follow that kind of over to here, it would be, I don't know, maybe about 30. 30. So I'll do 30, and you must, 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 must have a direction on there. I'm comparing that now to this zero line. So from zero, it is south. 30 degrees south latitude. What is the approximate longitude of the P in Europe? What am I doing? Longitude. Longitude of the P in Europe. I'm going to go like this. Okay. Uh, 15 maybe? 10? I think 15. And this is zero now, so it is now east. 15 degrees east. Uh, 15, maybe 10, but east is really where people uh, tend to falter on this one. What is the latitude of the D in India? What am I doing? Latitude. The D in India. Check that out. Right there, 20, I'm comparing it to zero right here, so it is north of the latitude line. 20 degrees north. If you don't know latitude longitude, learn it now, know it, learn it. The first day of summer is June 21st. On this day, the sun is directly overhead at noon at the Tropic of Cancer. According to the map, what is the latitude of the Tropic of Cancer? Check it out. Tropic of Cancer, 23.5 degrees north. We are rounding the corner here, ladies and gentlemen, almost done. The first day of winter is December 21st. Remember that? Remember that? Uh, on this day, the sun is directly overhead at noon at the Tropic of Capricorn. According to the map, what's the latitude of the Tropic of Capricorn? Right here, 23.5 degrees south. And that is this line right here. It shows that dashed line. This will help you with latitude and longitude if you need, if you need that. 23.5 degrees south. The sun is always very high in the sky at the equator. That 
is why it's hot there. However, the sun is directly overhead at noon only two days of the year. Meaning at the equator, sorry. Uh, however, the sun is directly overhead at the equator only two days of the year, and that means 90 degrees up directly overhead. Those days are March 21st and September 23rd. Know it. Know that. Know those two days. That's important. Only two days a year is it directly overhead at the equator. It's very high in the sky, but 90 degrees only those two days. Color over the equator with a purple pencil. That's just, uh, just so you can see it right there. Only two days a year. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, 360. I'm Mr. Gazda. And uh, on behalf of all the fine folks, all the little people here at Gastonian Productions, they really uh, like to thank them. And uh, thanks for watching.